I'm Luo Tongyu. Uh, it's a great honor to present our work, Building Embedded Systems Like It's 1996. Um, this work has been done in collaboration between Stevens Institute of Technology, the University of Utah, University of Pudia, uh, Norwegian University of Science and Technology, Duff University, and Cyber ITL Independent Research. So embedded devices are running everywhere to connect the physical world with the digital world. So by estimation, there are more than 35 billion embedded systems installed in the wild. So the large-scale deployment makes the security of embedded systems critical. So many mitigations are used to protect the desktop system from different kinds of attacks. So these memory-related mitigations include both user space and Linux uh, and kernel level. So the most famous ones include stack canary, non-executable stack, address space layout randomization, and so on. So the mitigations used by desktop binaries can also be applied to embedded systems. Um, however, the preliminary result from our collaborator indicate that mitigation is rarely adopted on embedded devices. So the table presents the result from our collaborators by evaluating the mitigation in popular router. So looking at this table, we can see binaries from desktop are well protected with stack canary, non-executable stack, and relocation rate only. Um, but in comparison, all the mitigations are almost missing in popular routers. Um, this motivates us to extend this study into a much larger scale. So in this paper, we focus on three research questions. So the first one is, do the embedded devices adopt attack mitigations? And second, is the attack mitigations, be, uh, is the attack mitigations improving over time? And third, if the attack mitigations are missing, what are the possible reasons? So to answer this question, we perform a large-scale study on evaluating the mitigation adoption on embedded devices. So we focus on Linux-based devices because they not only represent the dominant type, but also support most of the mitigation. So before we answer those research questions, let's first see the challenges on performing such a large-scale study. Um, the first is to build a representative data site. So the, pre, the previous data site are outdated and some of them are even invalid today. So the second challenge is to unpack the firmware images. So firmware images are organized in diverse formats. So if not properly handled, you won't be able to recover all the information. And third, how we can accurately identify those attack mitigations. Um, so there are existing tools, but they all have design limitations. So here is uh, the, the design of our study is straightforward, which has four major components. So the first step is to use a web crawler to collect the firmware images from the vendor website. Um, we only focus on the publicly available data um, for ASCO consideration. Um, once the firmware images has been collected, the next step is to unpack the firmware images. During the unpacking process, we collect both the Linux kernel and the file system. Um, we will then perform the mitigation identification, um, and the last step is to analyze the result. Um, so in total, we collected over 80,000 firmware images from 38 popular vendors. The firmware images range from 1998 to 2021, uh, which contains the most common type of embedded devices. So to unpack the firmware images, uh, we use a firmware unpacking tool from the previous work, uh, Firm Admin. The tool is, de uh, is designed on top of Beamwork, uh, which is capable of extracting both file systems and the Linux kernel. So we call a firmware is successfully unpacked if at least a file system or a Linux kernel is extracted. So this table presents the number of images we collected and the unpacked for each of the vendors. So in amount of the 18,000, Firmwares we collected, we unpacked 10,000 of them with a success rate about 5, uh, 58%, 59%. Um, this also include over 9,000 file systems with 3 million, uh, with 3 million ELF binary uh, and about 8,000 Linux kernel. Yeah, uh, about 8,000 uh, Linux kernel. So in terms of the user space mitigation, um, we include all the mitigations that are popular in the uh, Linux system distribution. 
Um, so this collection of user space mitigation we consider include stack canary, um, fortified source, precision independent code, uh, relocation rate only, and non executable stack. Um, this is also the same sighting uh, with all the other popular mitigation identification tools. So we follow a similar idea on selecting the kernel level mitigation. Um, so first, the mitigation is active in Linux distribution. And second, it has been released for over three years, um, so the vendors have enough time to deploy them. Um, and third, uh, it's applicable to the embedded system. Um, so, so far we have been discussed the design of our study. Now I would like to share the interesting result we have found to answer the previous proposed questions. Um, so the first one, do embedded devices adopt it? Uh, attack mitigations. So this table on the right presents the number of ELF binaries and the adoption rate of each of the mitigation for every vendors. Um, so if we're looking at this table, we can see binaries from Debian package has been used as the baseline. Um, so comparing the result, we can see the adoption rate of mitigation by embedded binaries are surprisingly low, especially comparing with the desktop binaries. Um, for example, we can see over 85% of the binary from desktop binaries are well protected with the stack canary, uh, but this number drops to 29% on embedded devices. Um, on the other hand, the adoption rate of mitigation dramatically vary across the vendors. Um, some good performance vendors can achieve like 80% uh, adoption rate of the stack canary, uh, but this, uh, but the the, wor the worst ones will completely ignore it. So we have more interesting findings by breaking down the binaries by types. Um, here I like to share one of them, which is breaking down the binaries with architecture. Um, so we can see the ARMS binary with the largest group has a moderate level of all kinds of attack mitigations. Um, however, MIPS as the second largest group has the lower list. Uh, attack mitigations in nearly every uh, mitigations. So in, co in comparison, the X86 and uh, ARM64 binaries have relatively higher adoption rate. Uh, this is because they are uh, using in the, uh, they are they usually running on the newer building environment. So the adoption in kernel level mitigation is also uh, disappointing. So according to this table, uh, in amount of over 3,000 analyzed Linux kernel, only 159 of them are protected with stack protector. Um, the other protections are almost missing. Um, so the evidence indicate that the kernel level mitigations are rarely adopted. So to answer the second question, um, is the adoption of attack mitigations improving over time? We keep track of the mitigation adoption change over the time. Um, this figure presents the user space mitigation change from 2010 to 2021. Uh, we can see only the adoption of non-executable stack present a positive trend. All the others are not improving, and some of them are even getting worse. So here is another figure indicating the change of individual firmware. Each of the points in this figure represents a firmware with multiple versions. So we compare the adoption rate of mitigation across the oldest version and the newest version. According to this figure, most of the firmware present no change at all, the, uh, the green ones, uh, but some of them are even getting worse. So we also keep track of the kernel level mitigation change over time. So this figure presented the result for stack protector. Uh, we only consider this one because this is the only mitigation commonly identified in the kernels. So the overall adoption rate is low, uh, but it's good to see the adoption rate consistently uh, increase over the past decade. Uh, this is because the vendors are using newer version of Linux kernel, uh, which brings the positive trend. So remember the third question is to figure out the possible reasons of missing such mitigations. So to answer this question, we didn't directly contact or do an interview with the vendors. Um, so all these following reasons are potential reasons inferred based on our experiment. So the first potential explanation comes from the restriction of building tools. Um, this table presents the availability of mitigation in different versions of build root. 
which is the automatic building tools used by many vendors. So we can see many of these mitigation is so we can see many of these mitigations are not available before 2012, um, and more of the mitigations are available after 2017. So if the vendors are not update their building tools in time, they won't be able to deploy many of the uh, mitigations to their product. So another reason is coming from the large number of binary reviews. So the left table represents the com how commonly the binaries has been reused uh, in each of the vendors. So on average, uh, only about 8.9% uh, of the binaries are unique in each of the vendor, which means one binary on average will be used by 11 firmwares or 11 products. So the binary reuse also happens in between the vendors. Um, so the right figure, the heat map, represent, uh, the heat map represent the number of uh, duplicated binaries in between the vendors. So the darker color means a larger number of binaries. Um, so both of the results indicate that binary reuse are super common in the wild, and the missing of mitigation in those reuse binary will be easily spreaded to much more devices. Um, so another intuitive explanation for the lack of mitigation comes from the overhead. So this table presents the overhead of storage space, memory usage, and runtime performance when each of the mitigation adopted. So from the left to right, the mitigations is enabled one after another. So we can see the mitigations like stack canary, uh, precision independent code, and relocation rate only have observable overhead. Um, but it's hard for us to determine if these overhead are affordable or not. Um, so this needs to be confirmed by the van. So finally, we would like to answer another interesting question. Are the low adoption rate of mitigation attributed to the lack of vulnerabilities? Um, imagine if there are no vulnerabilities, then there are no meanings to protect the binaries. Um, so we thereby perform a key study on evaluating the embedded vulnerabilities. So it shows that memory corruption vulnerabilities are super common on embedded devices. For instance, we have found two memory-related uh, vulnerabilities reported on 2021, which affect millions of devices rely on Realtek SDK. So as a further step, we identified 1,300 binaries affected by those Realtek SDK. Um, these uh, this binaries present no border adoption rate on the attack mitigation. So this is about our paper, and thank you so much for listening. So any questions are welcome.